Welcome everyone to the technical presentation for What's New Skido and Lynx Mid Year 24. My name is Benjamin, I'm project lead for this service. So let's get right away into the content that we will be reviewing today. So first of all, we will start with Skido Mid Year 24 for the Rev Gen 5 expansion, the 850 Turbo are now on trail, the Free Ride Mid Year 24, the Backcountry, and then we will jump on the Lynx Mid Year 24, the Radiant 2 expansion, the Easy Ride Plus rear suspension, the DS Plus rear suspension, and the Commander RE. After that, we're going to look into the modifications that are happening on both brands, Skidoo and Lynx, for the drive system, the engine installation, and the electrical system. So let's get started with Skidoo. The G5 expands the trail four stroke on Grand Touring and Renegade, including the 900 days, Turbo, and Turbo R. We are 24 four strokes will carry the G5 improvements seen last year with the 10 and a quarter gauge, multifunction switch, and the improved CVD venting. The exhaust shield will be similar to the two stroke configuration. A new center hood is introduced to accommodate the, the intercooler. A new modular airbox design is used across different engine configurations, with common parts to simplify assembly operations and reduce complexity. With the Meteor 24, the MXZ XRS with competition package will offer a 850 E-Tech Turbo R of 180 HP, compatible with long wide open throttle. All of this due to a new intake injection spray that will allow to cool the system. The new launch mode with these two strokes will also allow to provide a responsive and linear acceleration. Now, if we go more in depth of the competition package, as mentioned, it will offer the new 850 Turbo R for trail with a vaporized water that will help to keep the piston temperature under control. All of this will be controlled by the help of the ECM. The competition package is inspired of the coloration of our racing MEC and will come with the XRS reinforced running boards, as well as the new four piston brake caliper with the adjustable brake lever. Also, the cluster will be a 10 and a quarter touchscreen and this package will feature a two-ply ripsaw to track. On the hood side, a two-piece right-hand lateral hood will be used to allow the oversized hood grille for the exhaust banding. The 850 Tech Turbo will deliver a minimum of eight more HP than the closest two-stroke turbo competitor. Our turbo boost pressure will be adjusting based on the ambient conditions to maintain the full 180 HP, while the competition is using a constant boost pressure, leading to power loss when the temperature is rising. This explains the difference of HP you can see here with the 11 HP. The intake injection spray cooling system will need the XPS Turbo Ice, which is a mixture of purified water and methanol, which is being injected by an electric pump after a trial body to further cool the air and reduce the piston temperature. The average consumption should be around 700 to 1000 km per liter. Also, the XPS ice contains additive to keep it from foaming. Retail is going to be around $29.99 Canadian or $24.99 US. And we're looking at a freezing point of roughly minus 38 Celsius. As you may see, the tank will be sitting over the battery and will contain up to 1.2 liter. The electric pump is right underneath the tank. A pressure sensor will know when the tank is empty, which will advise the rider in the cluster. To save the engine, the power will progressively reduce from 180 to 165 if the tank is empty. The main changes for the free ride for year 24 is as usual the new colors, but also the introduction of the T-Motion XT with a fixed rear arm as well as the new track of 15 inch width using full rods. Also, this year, the 850 Tech Turbo R will be available with 146 inch track. This year, the Freeride 154 will have two tracks options, which both will be 15 inch width. The first one is the 3 inch paddles with a 3.5 pitch that will be using narrow slides, while the 2.5 inch paddles will be with the 2.86 pitch and will be using the large slides. The Meijer 24 Backcountry will feature the adjustable brake lever and a one-piece colored side panel. The Backcountry X and XRS will both be coming with the precision rack steering. New this year, the rear suspension will feature the C-Motion X. Going more in details of the new C-Motion X, it has the same geometry and improvement of the T-Motion XT. 
but it is using different rails, more idle wheels, and it has the rail reinforcement. Following feedback from the field, the vent grill on the CVT cover will have additional protection with a raised ridge on the side to provide protection against impacts. Following some misunderstanding with the adjustable limiter strut dynamic, we wanted to clarify that the limiter strut needs to be in long position to verify the rear suspension side. The reason is that once you're in the, the agile or long position, if you move the rear bumper, this motion will have high resistance. Once you're in the precision plus or short position, if you move the rear bumper, this motion will have low resistance until the rails fully touch the ground. Now let's jump on links. Here we have a quick overview of all the Raisin 2 trail available this year with some that are specific to EMEA. For North America, NEMEA, the Mir 24 Ravi RE will come from factory with shorter lugs, passing from 1.5 inch or 38 millimeters lug to a 1.25 inch or 32 millimeters lug. This will avoid the rubbing we've seen between the track and the tunnel protectors. Over here, all the parts that are in blue or turquoise are new parts for the trail links, with the gray ones are reused from the Raisin platform. The orange parts are all parts reused from Skidoo the Gen 5. Again, the same logic of color applies over here. On the panel side, one of the interesting elements is that the CVT cover panel won't be using any adhesive foam. The left-hand side panel that mesh is to prevent the snow intrusion. The inner panel part allows an improved CVT cooling. To remove the sub the same strategy as we are used applies. We remove the panel as identified by the purple arrows. Then we unscrew the six screw identified by the yellow arrows. And then we unscrew the clamp that is identified by the green arrow. And then we're good to pull on the sub -bay. For that, will be coming on the trail model, delivering an astonishing 4,800 peak lumen. This is all due to the two LED low beam and the two LED high beams. A new one of seat specific to links is introduced on the Ravi RE and Entro, external RE and center, as well as the 49 Ranger Pro. The shorter seat is mainly to offer a new rider ergonomy and to keep the rider in a better neutral position, as well as to allow common accessories with Skidoo. This year, we introduced a new Easy Ride Plus, providing an improved riding comfort, a better deep snow performance, and more adjustability. This will apply to the Commander Ori and the external Brutal. All the parts in white and green are all new parts. The main new components that distinguish both suspensions are the new front arm, the new 80 mm front wheel, the new rails, and the reinforcement rail. The new Easy Ride Plus will provide an additional 12 mm extra travel of the suspension when fully extended. It will also provide approximately an extra 30 mm of more travel due to the longer limiter strap. The idler wheels on the Easy Ride Plus will be positioned on different positions and paired to avoid touching the track rods at the same time. This will improve the noise generated by the track in use. The Mayor 24 Easy Ride Plus allows the suspension to work more independently between the front and the rear. This means the center shock will have more stroke before the limiter strap will pull and engage the rear. This will allow the rear end of the suspension to be more open, so it will dig deeper in the deep snow. The new angle between the drive axle and the rail will offer a shallower angle for smoother performance in deep snow due to going from a 45 degrees to a 37 degrees. When your 23 rear shock stroke was 126 mm for the 1-up and 139mm for the 2-up, while Mini 24 is 130mm for the 1-up and 145 for the 2-up. The Mini 24 49 Ranger Standard, 69 Ranger Standard and Limited, as well as the Commander Standard Limited and RE will have the new RASX 39-inch carved A-arms. The shock length and stroke will remain the same between the Mini 23 and Mini 24 39-inch. The sway bar dimension is increased to further improve handling. The 49 Ranger Pro will remain with the 36 inch width front and with the rest three geometry. The rear suspension DS Plus rear arm will see a decrease in weight of 0.15 kg and the front arm will see a weight decrease of 0.25 kg. The material remains the same, but the wall thicknesses of the tubes and blades have been reduced. 
The Shredder 3900 or the 154 inch rear 24 has two track options. The first one is the 3 inch paddles with a 3.5 pitch that will be using narrow slides, while the 2.5 inch paddles will be using a 2.86 pitch and will be coming with the large slides. The Commander GT will be coming with an adjustable riser, which will now be compatible with the wire ITC using a throttle cable 70 mm longer. The Commander RE will be coming with the rail reinforcement and the new KYB46 shock. The reinforcement rails will be available in accessory for the other packages of VGC Bright Plus, not coming from factory with this option. The new Ranger Pro is now with the platform Raisin 2. Introducing the new one-up Sport C and using the rear suspension PPS2 DS Plus. As mentioned a bit earlier, the front suspension will remain with the 36-inch width. Now, if we take a look to the common changes impacting both Skido and Lux, we have a new caliper, a new mounting bracket, a new frame section, a new brake hose, a new brake protector, and a modified foothold to add clearance for the brake caliper. It is very important that you are aware that the bleeding procedure will need to be performed with the caliper resting at 70 degrees plus or minus 10 degrees versus the horizontal. The bleeding access hole is within the CVT cover support, as you may see on the left hand side picture. A new master cylinder protector is introduced. It won't be using the same strategy as the previous protector from the accessory. Instead, it will be directly integrated as the part itself. Over this, it will also feature the adjustable brake lever. The new drive axle connector introduced last year will be implemented across the whole lineup, being the Gen 4 and the Raging. This will allow also these platforms to benefit from the 50% reduction in time to remove and install the track. The 3 inch lug track for the Shredder and Freeride is new. It is the Powder Max 4 X Lite providing a weight reduction up to 3.2 pounds or 1.45 kilogram. This will allow less rotating weight and less vibration as the weight is more evenly distributed between each pitch. The 600R is coming in the Gen 5 platform and as per the 850, it will be introduced with the four engine mounts. This will bring more comfort by limiting the engine movement and reducing the vibrations. It will also allow a more stable clutch alignment and tension which will improve the belt durability. It also allows for a narrower packaging, which definitely helps in side yield performance. All two stroke in the platform Raisin 2 Engine 5 will have the new 850 turbo coolant and new coolant hose rotting. The new coolant bottle allows to relocate the fuse box, providing the possibility to install the manual rewind on all two stroke 16 inch. A new 520 watt stator is introduced to replace the 420. It will need to reuse the regulator from the 650 watt. This concludes all of the technical news related to Skidoo and Lynx. I hope you enjoyed.